Hello and welcome to Basic Computer Help. In this episode, I'm going to continue with my onion routing series by turning the Raspberry Pi into a wireless router that automatically onion routes your all of your internet traffic. One cool thing I like about the uh, Raspberry Pi is that you could turn it into a wireless router fairly easily. It took me about 20 minutes. I will make a video in the future on how to do that. This video assumes that you've already turned your Raspberry Pi into a wireless router. As you can see, I'm in the Raspberry Pi desktop, but I'm actually in the Raspberry Pi desktop via a VNC connection, a remote desktop connection. Uh, so the first thing we're going to want to do is have a terminal up. You can actually do all of this stuff directly from a terminal but screen capturing this actually comes out a little bit better and there is less upscaling and I've already tested it it looks better this way the first thing we're going to actually want to do is install Tor which is actually fairly simple we're going to sudo apt git Now there's a couple reasons you'd want to do something like a router to and when it asks if you want to continue say yes it, but using a router to onion route your traffic one if your computer has malware you're going to completely diminish onion routing on your own computer this will actually take all of your internet traffic and reroute it through those extra computers and servers Will I keep my Raspberry Pi as an onion router? No. One, I don't have any purpose or need for onion routing at all. And two, I have two wireless routers in my house now. I don't need a third one. This will take some time to set up. So until as it sets up, we will actually... Oh, it's done. Now we're going to need to do a little bit of configuring. We're going to do it with Nano. Whoops. And we're going to edit the Tor resource file. Nano is actually a really great terminal based editor. It's actually really good because I haven't used VI in a while. If this was a couple years ago, I'd been editing in VI. So, right about here, we're all right. We're going to need to actually give it a few commands log notice file. And we're going to have this in view and var log tour notices that log one question people have been asking me is who needs onion routing if they don't have anything really you know if they're not doing anything illegal well whistleblowers use onion routers whistleblowers use onion routers and people who are reporting on other nefarious countries like China the Soviet Union if the internet was around when the Soviet Union was up say somebody was reporting on Joseph Stalin they would have used onion routing to make it so that they weren't caught by Stalin quite as easily All right, I had to do a little bit more research and this particular oops, this particular line right here, virtual address network, should be 10.192.0.0 forward slash 10. At least according to the Tor website itself. I also forgot, automap hosts suffixes. I'm running off of a note here sitting next to me. Alright, and of course when we're done we go control X. It'll ask if we want to save. Yes, and confirming the location. Now we're going to do a little change, but this part is optional. Whoops. Uh -huh. And we're going to change this thing's SSID over to Onion Pie. As you could tell, this is also the tutorial from Adafruit with some minor changes. I'm just going to leave 
Oops, I didn't need to do that. I'm just going to leave the past phrase as raspberry. Now we need just need to redirect. This is just going to update. This is just going to update it so that all new connections have to go through Tor as if it's all set up. If we want to be able to SSH back into our our actual Raspberry Pi, which of course I would like to do. Oops. We need to set that up as well. That yes, this is case sensitive. WLAN zero is the wireless LAN. All right, this is actually our command: sudo app tables. We're actually telling it to pre-route off of the wireless LAN, meaning ignore all special routing information for this particular command. If it's coming off of wireless LAN via TCP port 22, and we're going to redirect it just back to port 22. Now we're going to need to route all of our TCP traffic from the wireless LAN to port 9040, which is the transport in our Tor RC. So I'm just going to edit out all this tedious crap. And this is actually our routing command here. Pretty much essentially all it does is it tells it to take all TCP traffic and shove it to uh, port 9040. Now we're just going to run a real quick check. To make sure it's working. There's our SSH. And here's our all others. We're now going to append it to a file that gets created when you turn yep, when you turn this into a wireless router. There we go. Pretty much all this is doing is saying start up a, a command shell as root. And we want to just execute this command in the shell. It's not too complicated. We could probably do all this from the command uh, without actually restarting the shell command. Now, if we want to have the ability to debug our Tor router, we're going to want to create a log file. As you notice, this was actually one of the commands there. Since it technically does not exist, we're going to need to do something called touching it, which will just pretty much create it in this case. Now we just need to change its owner. We just need to remove its executable flag and pretty much a few other things. If we wanted to verify that it is there, oops. We're going to actually just do an ls command. Oops, did not need to do all that. All right, we have a log and we have notices.log. Now we should, if we really want to use this, start tour, done. Okay, it's already running which is good. All we did was verify that it's running. And this is just more of a sanity check as a programmer myself. I do a lot of sanity checks, even though I know everything is working properly. Also, as a computer maintenance guy, I do a lot of sanity checks, too, from my days on Windows. All right, that should be it. See you when I go to my actual desktop. Okay, so we have the Raspberry Pi all set up and installed somewhere. So now all we have to do is connect it. 
Right now I'm still connected via my default router, so I get the same IP address. I'll actually show you. Here is my external IP address. And if I refresh, you can see that that is actually my IP address. Now pretty much we just connect to the Raspberry Pi. You type in the password that's in that little file list. If you followed um, Adafruit's tutorial, it'll be Raspberry. And if it's like my situation, it might take a minute if you have a weak signal. And a lot of people in your area have wireless. And it might help if you spelt Raspberry right. And of course you'll get this if it's the first time you've connected to it. Um, pretty much pick whatever you want. I'm going to call this a public Wi-Fi because it'll also restrict a lot of the applications that could reveal my real IP address. And let's just refresh this page. As you can see, my IP address has changed. It'll pretty much keep the same external facing IP address until the Pi gets reset it. Uh, I did actually install an additional script that will cause the Raspberry Pi to reset once a day at about 4 a.m. Uh, because that is actually when I'm asleep all the time. So There is also extra code on Adafruit's website that will allow this thing to change like every couple minutes. I believe default is like every 10 minutes. So I'll link all that in the description. And like I said one in my last video, one cool thing about onion routing is the computers in between your computer and this particular IP address are constantly changing. I will actually have a video up sometime in the near future on exactly what onion routing does. Until then, have a nice day.